Welcome, curious minds, to another deep dive. Great to be here. Today, we're plunging into the internet computer uh, ICP. It's a mm -hmm. project that's, well, constantly evolving, sparks a lot of discussion. And sometimes feels a bit like an underestimated giant, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So our mission today is pretty clear. We're going to unpack the latest updates, try to understand the tech, which is pretty groundbreaking, mm -hmm. analyze the market moves, which are... Uh, complex and often conflicting. Definitely seeing that. And explore the community dynamics around ICP, right. all drawn directly from the sources you provided. Right. We're aiming to distill the most important insights so you can quickly grasp what's really going on. And it truly is a fascinating subject. Like you said, ICP isn't just about price charts, you know, right. <laughs> or just another blockchain trying to fit in. It's this powerful mix of uh, cutting edge tech, tricky market forces, and a really passionate, vibrant ecosystem. Which makes it perfect for this kind of deep dive getting beyond the headlines. Exactly. To understand the core of what's being built and, well, why you should care. Okay, let's start right at the heart then. Huh. Definity's AI application. Caffeine AI. Ah, oh, yes. Caffeine. The sources describe it as this innovative, prompt-based tool. Imagine creating web apps, websites, just by, like talking to it, or using simple prompts. It sounds almost like science fiction, but yeah. The sources mentioned building, say, an appointment app mm. with reminders, categories, all that, in just three to five minutes. Three to five minutes. Yeah, with minimal prompts. It's seriously advanced stuff. And Definity apparently expects it to get uh, absolutely insane as the machine learns more. That sounds incredibly ambitious. Yeah. But I mean, how truly disruptive is it? Can't other platforms just use AI like this too? That's a really good question. It gets to their whole self-writing internet idea. Okay. See, Caffeine AI runs entirely on the internet computer's smart contract layer. They call them canisters. Canisters, right. I've heard that term. Think of them like these self-contained, tamper-proof little micro-applications. They handle everything the front end the user sees, the back end logic. The data storage, too. The data storage, user authentication, all of it. And this is the crucial part. No AWS. No AWS. No GitHub. No third-party plugins. The whole app stack gets launched directly on-chain just from AI prompts. So it's decentralized from the get-go. Exactly. Fully decentralized from day one. Okay, so it's not just AI building an app. It's AI building a fully decentralized app on a decentralized cloud. Uh, That's yeah. quite a distinction. It really is. And the implications are, well... Massive. Like what? First, democratization of development, right? People who aren't coders can just speak an idea into a usable app. Without writing code. Zero code. Second, you get all the decentralization benefits baked in. Censorship resistant, tamper resistant, auditable by default. Which is a big difference from, say, traditional cloud services. Huge difference. Those can be shut down, controlled. And then there's the market impact. One source mentions someone made a DocuSign style app. Like for signing documents online. Yeah, tapping into a, what, $15 billion market? And they built it in minutes with Caffeine AI. Wow. Okay. That makes you wonder, doesn't it, if you can spin up complex apps that quickly. What does that mean for traditional software development for the tech giants? Yeah. Definity obviously sees the potential. They're pushing Caffeine AI hard. Mm -hmm. Sources mentioned the World Computer Hacker League. Attracted 11,000 signups. 11,000, yeah. Mostly because of Caffeine AI, apparently. And they're running contests, too, with some serious prize money, like $7,500 up to $25,000. They are really trying to get it out there. Now, it's fair to say one source did raise a maybe a slight concern Karen, what? about whether Caffeine AI can, you know, maintain and troubleshoot these apps long term well, since you, they're built so dynamic. Okay, that's a valid point. Maintenance is key. It is. But the overall feeling seems bullish because the core tech itself is so potentially transformative. The idea is the AI will learn and improve on that front too. Right. So incredible tech, but let's face it, the market often cares more about the price. Well, it's always. And ICP's market story is... Yeah, complicated. Conflicting signals everywhere in these sources. It feels like a real battleground of technicals. That's a good way to put it. So right now, ICP has been trading around uh, $5.53. $5 mm -hmm. It recently hit a high weekly candle close at $5.97. But there's this key resistance level, a ceiling basically, at $6.30. And it's hit that ceiling before? Four times, according to the sources. March, early May, mid-June, late July. Rejected each time. And four rejections at $6.30. That sounds, well, not great. 
Does that point towards a bearish trend? Well, let's look at the cautious side first, the bearish takes from the sources. ICP's recent pullback, largely expected. Why expected? Because the whole altcoin market was seen as overextended, overbought. Prices shot up too fast. Okay. You could see it in things like the Others chart, which tracks alts besides BTC and ETH, and indicators like the RSI. Relative Strength Index. Right, showing things were overbought. EMA bans, same story. Plus, the U.S. stock market was also overextended, and crypto often correlates, right? Sure. And significantly, ICP has been lacking. It was up maybe 22% on the month when the average alt was doing 35-40%. So it's underperforming the pack right now, tech aside. Anything else fueling the pessimism? Yeah, the cycle burn rate. That's how fast ICP tokens are being used, essentially burned by yeah. network activity. Yeah. It's struggling. At lows not seen since last September, that makes ICP more inflationary, Add sell pressure. More tokens entering circulation than being used up. Basically. And shorter term signals look uh, a little bit messy, as one source put it. Price broke below key EMA bands on the three day chart. Is that usually bad? Historically, yeah. It's led to big drawdowns before, like 50% pullbacks. Some charts even suggest it could keep going down short term, maybe $5.10, maybe even $4.45. Okay, that's a pretty stark picture. Is there sure. is there a counter argument? Yeah. Any bullish takes in the sources? Oh, absolutely. This is where the conflicting signals really clash. Because not everyone's pessimistic. Good. Time, right, time frame signals, like the monthly stochastic RSI, still intact. And that's important because... Because that kind of long-term momentum signal is seen as very bullish. It's historically preceded huge rallies in other assets, like Ethereum. Okay, so short-term, messy, long-term bullish potential. That's one interpretation. Another view is that ICP is in an accumulation phase. Meaning? Meaning it's consolidating after the sell-off. The idea is smart money might be buying quietly before a potential big pump. And technical chart patterns. Sources mention things like a cup and handle. Right. The cup and handle, which looks like a teacup on the chart, often signals a potential breakout upwards after consolidating. Or a falling wedge. Another bullish reversal pattern, yeah. And some analysts look at an inverted chart trick. Flipping the chart upside down. Exactly, to spot patterns you might miss otherwise. On the inverted monthly chart, they saw what looked like a lower high, which, if it plays out, would actually mean a pump on the normal chart. Interesting technique. What about that $6.30s resistance? Well, connected to that is the triple top pattern on the weekly chart. Some see this bullishly. How can hitting a ceiling three times be bullish? The theory is, after failing three times, especially after a significant retrace like the 50-55% pullback ICP did have from that third top, it often means the selling pressure is exhausted, it's found a strong floor, and the next move is likely up, a breakout. I see. So the pullback after the third top is key. According to that analysis, yes. So looking ahead, what are the actual price predictions floating around for, say, August? The sources mention a range minimum maybe $7.50. Some are looking at $10, $12. Okay. And then you get the more optimistic calls, like maybe $20 this cycle, or even $100 if a real alt season kicks off. $100. That's ambitious, given where it is now. Very ambitious, yes. Depends heavily on that true alt season materializing. Mm. Broader market context is huge here, too. Like the Fed decisions. Exactly. A July rate cut was off the table, but a September cut seems probable that could boost markets. Yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin consolidating near its all-time highs is generally seen as bullish. Sets the stage for alts to potentially run if Bitcoin dominance drops. Bitcoin dominance, that's its market share compared to everything else. Right. If that falls maybe to 50-56%, it often signals money flowing into altcoins, the alt season. But it makes you wonder how much is macro versus ICP's own tech story driving things? Good question. And we can't forget the backstory of that controversial launch. Definitely part of the narrative. Yeah. The alleged manipulation, pumping it to $500, then dumping to $3. Created a really negative reputation. It did. But the community, as we'll get into, has been pushing back hard against that. Okay. So we have the tech, the volatile market. But here's where it gets, I think, really interesting. Traditional finance, TradFi. They're starting to pay attention to ICP. That seems surprising. It does, but the sources offer a clear why. Banks are actively getting ready. They want to be the on-ramps to crypto and the digital asset economy. And they've set a date for that. Citibank's CFO explicitly mentioned mid-2025 as a target. This isn't just talk, it's strategy. Any concrete examples of banks sniffing around ICP specifically? Yes. Kelvin, who's Citibank's head of Kodak Management, was actually at the World Computer Summit. Doing what? 
actively engaging, asking questions, described as scouting the tech for integration, banks aren't just watching anymore. That's pretty direct involvement. It is. And you can maybe see a parallel with JP Morgan, right? Uh -huh. CEO Jamie Dimon publicly bashes crypto. Well, the company invests heavily. Exactly. JPM coin, funding Ethereum, it seems like a common playbook. Be but cautious publicly, explore and invest privately. So what makes ICP specifically attractive to these big financial players? It's not just another DeFi chain in their eyes. Definitely not. ICP's value proposition is different. It's positioned as the cloud layer of Web3. The cloud layer. Meaning? It offers the whole stack. Yeah. Compute power, hosting, AI integration like caffeine, compliance layers, even cross-chain capabilities. Yeah all decentralized and secure. Which is exactly what banks would need for future digital infrastructure. Precisely. They need something robust, secure, and capable of hosting full applications, not just handling transactions. ICP offers that compute and storage on chain. And this isn't just theory. Is anyone actually using it? This is a huge development mentioned in the sources. Yeah. Dominic Williams, ICP's founder, confirmed it. Confirmed what? That Utopia, which is a private network layer built on ICP, is already being tested by banks. Which banks? Where? He specified banks outside the United States. The point is, implementation is apparently happening now. Wow. Okay. Banks are currently testing tech built on ICP. That's the report. Which raises that interesting question again. If this is happening, why the relatively low market cap? Around $3 billion, you said. Yeah. Compared to meme coins with huge valuations or other blockchains with maybe less functionality, it seems undervalued to some. Suggests the market hasn't fully grasped the real world application or the tech yet. That's the argument that a significant reevaluation might be coming if this TradFi adoption continues. Okay, fascinating stuff on the institutional side. Let's shift gears slightly to the human element, the ICP community. Mm -hmm. Always crucial in crypto. And the influencers shaping the narrative. They play a big role, don't they? Absolutely. They drive awareness, build community, sometimes guide development, hold people accountable. They're vital. The sources actually rank some key figures. Let's talk about the positive ones first. Okay. Blockchain Pill, Alex, ranked S tier, praised for consistent high quality content. Right. He descends the events too, like Caffeine AI in Switzerland, the World Computer Summit. Positive Energy supports other creators. Seems like a solid contributor. Definitely comes across that way in the reports. Then Six Figs, Kyle, also S rank, recognized for longevity, real commitment. He brought in some big names to interview Dominic Williams, right? Crypto, Wendio, BitBoy. Yeah. And he's credited with that cracking FTX documentary exposing the alleged launch manipulation. A major contribution to the community's counter-narrative. Then there's Victor ICP, another S rank, an original influencer. Community manager for Goldow, ran social media for DFinity community before, hmm. built projects like NFT Loya, very involved. And attends the events too, yeah. showing that long-term presence. Mm -hmm. And Kyle Stolett, also S-Rank, praised for longevity, professional approach with his Mission Comms work. Active participation and showed incredible resilience through personal difficulties while still promoting ICP. Yeah, that dedication was highlighted. And finally, Zero to Hero, A-Rank, commended for high quality videos. Especially showing how to build complex stuff with Caffeine AI, right? Exactly. And also for supporting other creators. It seems like there's a strong core of builders and positive voices. There definitely appears to be. But the sources didn't shy away from controversy either. No, they didn't. Let's yeah. address those just reporting what the sources said. Jerry Banfield. Rated C, described as polarizing, got a lot of views. But then deleted his content and allegedly dumped his own token, JBBJ. Yeah, raising questions about commitment, according to the reports. And then Scott Summers, rated F. This one sounds pretty serious. Accused of scamming Definity oh. by allegedly buying bot views to win a grant and then pulling liquidity from a project which hurt community trust. Oof. That kind of action can definitely damage a project's reputation. No doubt. It highlights the challenges communities face. But despite those negatives, the overall sense from the sources is that the core ICP community remains really strong. Mm-hmm supporting each other, working towards growth, often fighting uphill battles against negative narratives. Okay, so let's try and tie this all together. It's quite a picture. We've seen ICP's really ambitious vision, this self-writing internet with caffeine AI, yeah. truly potentially groundbreaking tech. Could fundamentally change how we build online. We've navigated the market. Complex, volatile, short-term worries clashing with uh, significant long-term bullish signals. A real tug of war.
reflecting that tension between skepticism and the scale of the innovation, perhaps. And then the really surprising part, the growing real interest from TradFi. Banks aren't just watching. They seem to be actively testing and integrating. Quietly building, indeed. It suggests a path beyond just crypto hype. Stepping back, it does seem like ICP is, as one source put it, quietly building the future of the internet. Strong fundamentals, real applications like Utopia being tested. And a dedicated community fighting for its narrative. It suggests a trajectory toward tangible, maybe even institutional adoption down the line. Which leads us to our final thought for you, the listener. Given ICP's ambitious tech like Caffeine AI and this increasing interest from major financial institutions, mm. how do you see its role evolving? What part will it play in the broader digital economy over the next few years, especially if this self-writing internet vision really starts to spread? A lot to think about there. Definitely. We encourage you to keep exploring these topics on your own. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.